Welcome to the Yes to Entrepreneurship podcast. So real quick, before I jump into the conversation with this week's guest, I just want to let you know what this show is about. Really, this show is just about all the conversations we, entrepreneurs, those of us who are the why notters, have around entrepreneurship. It's the conversation that you don't typically hear because you just see those fun posts on Instagram and Facebook where we're hanging out on yachts or we're making a ton of money and driving these fancy cars when reality is that's not real life. Real life is trying to figure out how you're going to pay bills, trying to figure out if you're going to make rent this month, trying to figure out if that new client really is going to help move you forward or if they're really going to bring you down. Really anything goes in these conversations and you, the listener, gets to eavesdrop in on these conversations that I'm having with fellow entrepreneurs. So grab your cup of coffee, grab your water, grab your tea, whatever it is that you enjoy, and a pen and paper because you're about to take some notes. Also, be sure to share this out. Oh, here comes my guest. Talk to you soon. <laughs> Quick shout out to our sponsor, StupidEasy.com. StupidEasy.com is a new online course platform where you can easily upload and sell your online courses without having to be tech savvy and without them taking a cut of your sales. Discover more at StupidEasy.com and we'll have a link in the show notes for you. Hey, hey. Hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm good. How are you doing? I'm awesome. So when I started out with the podcast here, I created the intake form so that, you know, I can get a little idea of who the peop- who everyone is before I meet them. And mm-hmm. what's funny is I put that out there mostly so that I could have a conversation starter, but I honestly haven't really used it much in terms of the conversation <laughs> because it just naturally develops. And so right. it's really cool to have. And then it's also cool to see everyone's answers. So what is it that you actually do and help people with? So I'm actually a creative brand strategist. And what that means, because a lot of people are like, what does that mean, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I work with heart centered women entrepreneurs and really just help them with creating their business in an authentic way where they can truly show up and stand out. Um, most of the women I work with have a, um, a true heart for business. So it's more than just business as usual. They have more of a mission that they are trying to get out in the world, whether it's through self care or um, health and wellness or style and fashion. Um, they're they're doing it for more reasons than just making money or more reasons than just I want to be an entrepreneur Um, those are the type of um, people that I work with and it really lights me up so in in my own way I feel like I'm the one that helps them change the world right I love that right (laughs) That, that is so cool and so how do people find you or how are you marketing your your services So I live on social media. I love (laughs) social media. Um, I'm definitely one of those people that have all the apps on my phone and (laughs) am constantly checking it. Um, Mainly Facebook and Instagram are my two favorites. Um, But a lot of my work also comes through referrals from previous people that I work with yeah. or just other um, entrepreneurs that I'm colleagues with that I've held conversations kind of like this with they get to know you know what I do and um, maybe they are already past that point but they'll send other people my way so pretty much between word of mouth and then social media have been the two top ways that people connect with me um, yeah. to work with me that that's awesome yeah i know uh for me social media is is a big driver specifically facebook um for getting connected with a lot of my current clients um which has helped my business a lot i also know that for me social media has also played its distracting role in my uh business and not letting me move forward as quickly as i wanted to until i started cutting it out in the mornings so i'm curious how do you how do you manage your your time on social media in terms of not getting caught up in that constant scrolling through the feed 
<laughs> right. <laughs> so um, for me, it definitely has been a um, implementing like a block scheduling, kind of like, um, well, I'm kind of dating myself here in age, but in school, um, they didn't have it when I actually attended school. But <laughs> now a lot of the high schools are with block scheduling where, you know, you do certain things certain days and then you don't have it the next day. Yeah. Um, and that's really kind of what I've done myself with my business and with social media. I actually have blocks of time where it's me working on my business, blocks of time working in my business, you know, and then I actually have specific blocks of time for social media as well. Um, and then I also for me, it's just been really not beating myself up when I do be, you know, when I do have those moments when I kind of get lost in the rabbit hole yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of Facebook especially um i just try to make sure that if i do get caught up and i find myself like okay i'll look up and be like oh my gosh i've been on here for 30 minutes then what i do is i just say for the next 10 minutes i have to at least comment on you know people that have commented on my page or go to clients pages or other influencers other colleagues that i know go to their page and engage with them so that way it's still me doing business in a sense yeah um and not just me watching funny videos <laughs> that's so easy to do right <laughs> the cats are all waiting for us yes cats and babies cats uh, and babies <laughs> it, yeah it's so true and now how do you because i know for uh, for me especially when starting out and what i tell clients too is don't try to be on every single platform and be present on every single platform because it's so overwhelming. I mean, I feel like each platform is its own business by itself, let alone all the other stuff you have to worry about with your business admin and your website and all that stuff. How does, how do you feel about that? Totally agree. And even as a brand strategist, I mean, that's what I tell people. Um, I tell my clients all the time to really look at one, how are you set up? You know, as a person, what do you like? Are you a writer? Um, do you like reading content? Do you like sharing in that way? Are you a visual person where you, you know, you take in thousands of selfies naturally yeah. <laughs> or, you know, pictures are your jam. Um, and from there, just really deciding which platform not only is going to lend itself to your personality, but also um, where your audience is going to be and like pick one and slay that one, you know, like just yes. own it. I like, totally own it. Um, like for me, I'm not really good with only 140 characters. So <laughs> Twitter is not really my jam, you know, so I may just share, you know, um, quotes there from time to time and small things. But if you go over to Instagram or you go to Facebook, you see me all the time. So yeah i totally agree with you because it's just so much it's like like you said each each platform is a business of its own so yeah yeah <laughs> it's true and you know that's the thing with me i have a love-hate relationship with instagram because it, just, <laughs> it seems so there's so much going on now that it's it's lost its for me and this is probably because i don't spend enough time on it but for me it just seems like it's lost its personality it's it's one thing that made it stood out you know or mm -hmm. stand out um and so for me i'm still on there but i'm all about sharing resources and i love sharing other people's resources because i don't need to come up with my own version of it if it's already out there and it's good i want to share it and with instagram it's not easy to share those links and it's not easy to you know uh engage comment wise either i mean they're making it a little bit better i guess but it's still not that that same um connection that i have on facebook where i feel like i'm more connected with each individual i agree it's it definitely is different um and i feel as though you know for instagram it's definitely for more visual brands um you know it's perfect for photographers or yes perfect for people in the fashion and style industries and things of that nature or just even for influencers that have that type of personality where it's like take a picture you know where they're constantly taking pictures or they're constantly doing things um so from that standpoint that's where i say it really kind of 
gets into who you are too and what you know and what motivates you and what you're trying to do yeah um, because i mean what you're saying in regards to links and stuff like that it definitely is hard you know harder to do on instagram the reason i love instagram so much is because i am a visual person um and i enjoy visual branding so i like designing stuff so yeah. um, you know so i love always posting those things on on my instagram so you know so for me it's like kind of like the outlet the creative outlet for me oh, i like that <laughs> you know to be able to utilize it in that way you know that there's so much creativity going on there but i haven't heard of anybody express it that way and that really does sum up what instagram should be and is for a lot of those visual brands now i'm curious because when I first started, I started, I put on my business card, creative consultant, I think it was. And cause I was like, I have so many things to offer. I do so many things and blah, blah, blah. And I would get that same thing where people were like, uh, what's this? <laughs> so yeah, I had to go and explain and everything. And over time that has changed, but I'm curious, how did you come about creative brand strategies? Cause it, it, that I like that it's, it's very, specific and it speaks what you do so for me i've i've gone through so many <laughs> different um names i guess <laughs> oh you, you didn't have it right out of the gate <laughs> right no 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 it has definitely evolved <laughs> over the years um so because i am i am a first of all creative because i am a creative you know yep. myself so even some of my earlier um titles that i used uh definitely showcase that but a lot of people were like what is that you know what is a brand illuminator what does that mean and i always had to explain it <laughs> so right, right. Like, maybe that's not quite the way to go but for me i um I came up, I decided to do creative brand strategies. One, because I wanted people to really understand that I am a creative at heart myself. And because I am a creative at heart, I understand other creatives because I have a, just kind of a natural tendency to attract creatives yeah. that I work with. Um, or those people that have, um, are creative at heart, but don't know how to bring it out. And so I'm, I'm pretty much like that translator for them <laughs> that's able yeah. to take their words or go into their brain and pull out that creative piece that's in there that they just are having a hard time really trying to articulate or, you know, share with anyone else. And then I'm able to create it. And then they're like, that's exactly how I envisioned it in my mind. So, and that's rewarding. Yes. It is because that's a tough job trying to come up with the trying to meet or exceed their vision and yeah. having them say that that's what they were looking at or that was even better than I was thinking. I mean, that's that's huge. Yes. And so um, also because I do a lot of work um, with helping people with their storytelling on for their brand as well. So yet again, another creative medium in regards to that. Um, so that's pretty much where the creative portion came from. But at the same time, where I have a unique trait is that I am equally left brain as I am right brain. <laughs> so I am very analytical. I see patterns and everything. Um, I'm very strategic. So I'm able to help both the visionary as well as the doer. So oh, I like that. You know, a lot of times, you know, visionaries, they see the big picture, but they have a hard time breaking it down into the steps to make it happen. Yes. <laughs> right. Been there, done that. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I'm able to help them do that. On the flip side, you have the analytical people who are a lot of times so tunnel vision on the steps that they might miss the bigger vision. And so I'm able to help them paint that overall picture as they're, you know, on their journey. So that's pretty much where creative brand strategist came from because I'm both creative as well as the strategist side. I love that. And you know, what you pointed out early on was it developed over time and specifically <laughs> years. And I um, will say that 
even up till recently, I kind of, I was very quiet about saying this because I was like, well, I don't want people to think that I can't do my job because if I say this, they're going to look at me different. And now I don't care because I'm like, I know what I'm talking about and I know that I can help get you results. So jump on the bandwagon so we can get <laughs> moving, you know? And, but what it is, is that when I first started, I, I had all these different things that came about and then finally bringing it all together. And it took, I met like a year and a half of being out on my own again and almost two years, I guess. And, um, and it's just now clicking. Like, I mean, I've always had the big vision that hasn't been a problem. Those little steps, I refer to it as the BSQ method, think big, act small, move quickly. And for me, getting, getting from point A to point C has always been a, a, a struggle sometimes because I wanna just jump to the big vision where you have to ring yourself back in and say, pump the brakes, there is a process, you have to go through these steps. And it takes time and it's not gonna happen overnight even though there, there is that, that vision and that those people telling you, oh, it's, it's so easy and be an entrepreneur and it looks great. And on especially I think on Instagram, that, that image of you can make millions by being your own boss and everything comes across, right? Right. <laughs> and so for me, I'm now more open with people saying, no, it, it's taken a good a chunk of time to get to where I'm at. And in fact, I actually just told um, a friend of mine today uh, that, you know, she was comparing my website with her soon to be website. And I was like, she was getting confused. And I said, let's ask the right question. What is it that you're looking for? Because I want you to use my website as an example to help you create the vision you're looking for, but don't compare my stage 10 that's been in the works for years to your stage one that is just literally starting out. Like, and she felt so much better when she realized that. And we play that comparison game so often that it's hard to realize it. Yes. It's so true. Like the whole thing is just like anything you grow and you evolve. I mean, you're not who you were three years ago today, you know, most hopefully not. <laughs> you know, most people had you changed. Um, you know, even for me is like, I think about things that I liked in high school, college that I'm like, you can never catch me doing now. Right. Um, and, and vice versa. There's things that I never would have eaten or um, activities that I never would have done in high school or college that I absolutely love now. And so it's always amazing to me that as entrepreneurs, we get into the space and think that we're supposed to come out the gate like, this is what I'm going to do. I know everything. Let's go make it happen. Woo, change the world. And to think that it's never going to grow and that it's never going to change. Even when we've seen all these major brands always are going through rebrands right? oh yeah so they're always changing they're always trying things some things work some things don't <laughs> they go back you know to old stuff but you have to try things and so the same is true you know for anybody so i tell all entrepreneurs you know don't beat yourself up no no you don't want to be rebranding every three months but you know <laughs> yeah you are going to make tweaks and, you know, nips and tucks along the way. And, um, you know, you, cause you're going to gain, gain, uh, gain more clarity. Right. Too, you know, as you continue to work with people and get clear on what it is that you really want to do fully in the, you know, in its fullness. So, but it's so true. We, we do that so much where we beat ourselves up and are like, I didn't make six figures in six seconds. <laughs> My idea must suck. You know, it's like, no <laughs> yeah you have, to, you have to give people time to know who you are you know and get to know what you have to offer it's so true and that's the thing when it comes to building a successful business is you have to put in that time and i know for me i spend a lot of time and sometimes i actually feel guilty because i'm like i really don't want to do more client work i want to do more of my work because <laughs> it's fun and i'm educating myself you know i have a lot of personal development time and I feel like that is huge for growing a successful business. Do you also um, factor in personal development time into your block scheduling? 
Oh my gosh, I'm a course junkie. <laughs> and not that I recommend that either, but <laughs> yes. but definitely, I'm, I mean, I've always just been someone that is a natural learner. So I love like books and reading stuff. And um, if I get an idea on, I wonder if I could do this, let me see if someone else has done it. So of course, you know, the YouTube university um, <laughs> where you can find anything, you know, Google and stuff and just reading things. So I, I'm very big on personal development. And at the end of the day, I really think that as entrepreneurs that um, honestly, it's our responsibility, you know, to study our craft and to get better at what we do. Just like any job that you would be in, they have advanced training or those yeah. C CEUs <laughs> yeah. that you get or you know you have to get recertified or whatever the case may be and it's to me it's the same thing with entrepreneurship you know things are changing no matter what industry you're in and you need to know what's going on yeah no it's so true and i mean especially in our worlds where we're dealing with tech right and social media i mean things are just changing like crazy and so you have to stay up on that which is another reason why uh, uh entrepreneurs have to realize that being on every social media platform, especially starting out, is not realistic because you can be on there, but you're not going to be effective. Right. Definitely not. I mean, because, you know, there's some, like for me, I have a presence on all of them, um, but like, I don't have time for Snapchat. Right. Cool, and I like to watch other people, but the stage where I'm at right now and things that I'm trying to accomplish in my business, like Snapchat is just not realistic for me right now like i don't have time to be snapping everything that i'm doing because i'm too busy doing it by the time i right by the time i realize it i'm like oh man that would have made a good snap i didn't already did it yep so, <laughs> you know it's like oh well i missed that you know so i mean because you would there's just not enough hours in a day to be on everything like that and so and to work in your business and to work with your clients and to right pay and to so yeah <laughs> have to be you have to have strategy i mean you have to have a plan and you have to stick to it um as much as possible it's so true and so how do you um manage the content that you're you're bringing in in terms of the stuff you're learning but the stuff you're also working with you're getting all these creative ideas i'm sure how do you manage the shiny object syndrome and how do you like filter out what you should focus on and what you can just put on the back burner. <laughs> all right. So first of all, what I I'm a big fan of journaling. So I have a idea ideas journal that's because I have ideas that come all time of the day, all the time, and I just write them in this journal. So they're all in one place and I can go back and read through them later. Love it. Um, what I always try to do is um, when I do have an idea, I just write it down. I don't really um, allow myself in that moment to really kind of think through it because what happens is a lot of times as a creative, you get an idea and it's like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. And then you're like, oh, well, let me go research this and let me do this. And, you know, I need to put this into action right this second. And then by the time you know, it's like four hours later and you research everything on this idea. And then it's like, oh, I really did have some other stuff I needed to do. Yep. <laughs> so, so what works for me is that I just write it down in my journal and that's it. Like I don't look into it. I don't do any research on it. I just write it down and let it sit and I go back to whatever it was that I was working on. And then I have, you know, I have built into like my reflective time where I will go back and read the things that I have written down. And then at that time, because you're not as close to it, so you're yeah. not excited and you know that adrenaline pumping you can read it with more clarity be like oh no this will fit with you know some plans i have for later in the year or this might would go better with things i was thinking about doing for next year you know and then you're able to kind of have more of that um clarity when looking at it to really decide is this a now thing or this is a later thing and sometimes like even for me I have to realize because I have so many ideas, some of them aren't even for me. Like, right. <laughs> you know, so I'm like, is this really for me? And then I, you know, so a lot of times I'll be like, oh no, this will be good for my client, you know, and I'll share it with them. 
but when you first get it, everything sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> and like it I hate doing it right now. <laughs> so until you figure out that once you get in the nitty gritty of it, you're like, uh, oh, this ain't cool. Like I just wanted to snap my fingers and make it happen. Now I'm not into this. <laughs> right, exactly. So I just find I allow myself to put some space between me and the original, <laughs> the original moment of the idea. It lets me look at it with a more clear eye to decide. Okay. Yeah. No, I get it. Cause that's exactly funny enough. That's actually what I do. I literally have my Evernote and I have a notebook in there that's my ideas and what I'll do is I literally, when a new idea comes up, I spend that few seconds or a couple minutes popping everything that comes into my mind. Cause sometimes it just hits me hard. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm coming up with name ideas, the product and how to market it and what it needs to have and all that stuff. So I'm like, ah, oh. so I just start plopping all of that in there and then I move on. And then if it comes up again later, then I can go back and be like, oh, I remember I put something like that in there because I know that that, that hot moment isn't going to come back the same way later if it ever comes back. Right. Exactly. You know, exactly. and, and like speaking of random ideas and stuff, I literally was at a friend's house and they, <laughs> this is the weirdest thing, but this is again where those ideas come up. I'm literally at their house and they have a heated toilet seat, which I don't know if you've ever experienced a heated toilet seat, but it's a little weird, but it's also really cool. <laughs> and no joke, my first thing, because this is just me, every time I see something, I'm like, how can I make this better? The first thing I thought of after I was like, oh, this is cool. I thought, okay, now how is this possible to have in a bathroom that normal people have where there's no outlet next to the toilet. And so I'm like, I already like start looking up at Amazon. I'm like, okay, they're all plugins. So what if I made the toilet seat that was a battery operated one for the average person? And that's half the price. Like, again, right. not my area of expertise in terms of, I don't need to be going making toilet seats for the average person. Like <laughs> somebody else can take that. Give me my 15% cut or whatever. Like, let's talk about it. And we're right. good to go. <laughs> oh, right, exactly. And no, I have never experienced a heated toilet seat, but now you have me curious. Um, and I'm yeah. like, hmm. I'm telling you, whole new experience. <laughs> 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 but you know, it's like, that's what happens is you, you get on these, uh, these, all these ideas. And it's like, you know, I always joke with people, halfway joking, where I'm like, a creative ad agency needs to have me on retainer and just be able to plug in and download whatever I've got going because they would make some good money off of just the starting points that I have for them. Right, right. Nope. Exactly. I totally agree because it's so funny you brought up about ad companies because I'm one of those people like every time I'm watching commercials, my first thing that I think of is like, what did this commercial win out over? Yeah. Like, what were the other commercials that got put on the chopping block in this one won. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, hmm, they should have did this or they should have added this part. This would have made it funnier, you know, like, so I'm totally with you, Ed. Like, yeah. Kindred spirit. <laughs> <laughs> For real. It's, a, it's just crazy. And, and, you know, that's the stuff that always comes up. Now, I love how you always talk about not beating yourself up. I want to ask you, because I know I face this from time to time, um, because I'm just a, I'm normally just a general positive person. So it takes a lot to weigh me down, but there are those moments, especially with my business where I'm like, I'll be down and out for a minute, maybe a few. And it's hard because you're like, I just, I don't know what to do next. And so I always like asking people, you know, do you feel that way? And how do you manage that moment or that moment in time, I should say. Right. Totally feel like that. Right. So <laughs> it is a totally normal thing. And pretty much all of my entrepreneur friends that I know um, feel like that in one way or another. And, you know, and most of us have not entrepreneurial friends who just don't get it. Yep. Um, so, you know, for me, it has really been community, you know, having a place to be able to go um, 
even if it's just one other person where I could just pop into their Facebook inbox, you know, I have some some um, women entrepreneurs that I'm really close with that I just pop into their inbox like, oh my God, this is a horrible day. <laughs> you know, I just feel like everything is falling apart. I just want to stay in my bed and I don't want to do this anymore. You can't make me. Um, and they're able to talk me down off the ledge and say, you know, it's just one of those days we all have them. That, so that's been really important for me. Like, um, you know, and I try to encourage all entrepreneurs to become a part of some type of community. Like, like I said, even if it's just yeah. one other person that you can be on this entrepreneur journey with, that's an entrepreneur too, that is going to get it, you know, that's right. gonna get that it didn't work well, right. The first time and, you know, or, you know, whether it's you're working a nine to five and you're trying to do your entrepreneur thing and they're just like, I hate getting up in the morning, somebody that gets that. Or if you are, you know, a full-time entrepreneur and you're like, I don't have no plan B, this has to work. And you have those, right. like, I've had all of these moments <laughs> yeah. that I'm referring to and just being able to have that person to talk to. Um, that, and if for whatever reason somebody's not available, my go-to is always music. Okay. Oh, I'm telling you, yes. Because <laughs> music is, a game changer is a mood changer you know and just putting on some really hype music and as crazy as it sounds you know having that dance party that people talk about it really makes a difference like it does <laughs> it does like just be silly and dancing around and you know whatever i'm glad i'm not the happen. only one having a dance party at like <laughs> noon on a tuesday <laughs> no you're not <laughs> Totally, my, with my dog looking at me like I'm a crazy person. Like, what is wrong with her? Oh yeah, oh yeah. My <laughs> boys, there. I got two dogs, and they're like, they they start barking. And they're like, oh, are we gonna play now? And I'm like, no, I'm just trying to, to get out the energy here, and I gotta get back to work. <laughs> right, exactly. So I, I pop mean, on at iTunes, Beats One, to get me through most of the day, or different radio stations there, and it's just like it makes a world of difference just having it on in the background, even if it's on low. Yep, it definitely does. I mean, it definitely sh helps to shift the energy. Um, and especially like, even it's just small things, like when I'm on a deadline and I know I need to get things done, I just putting on fast, simple music for me, like it just gets oh, me yeah. hype and I'm just like, yeah, I'm just typing <laughs> and I'm going to town and you know, and I'm like, wow, I really finished that fast. But <laughs> you know, I know it's part of it to do with the music. You know, <laughs> it was like, I just kind of been jamming out. So it does make it does make a difference. So I tell everybody that's listening to just, just try it. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that, that's the thing, you know, is like it, you got to go with what works for you. And for some, it may be podcasts. You know, mm -hmm. I have I love podcasts, and I have some really good ones that I listen to. And the the hard part for me is is that I don't want to make the time to listen to some of them during the day because I know that. I want to sit there and take notes. So if I'm driving or if I'm supposed to be working on client work, like I can't listen to that because I want to soak up every single word that they talk about versus music. I'm like, I, I'm not even really listening. It's just going in and it's just moving the body. You know, I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> it makes, it makes total sense. Um, because that's how I am with audio books. Oh I, yeah. Most of my books that I read, I listen to <laughs> on audio. And even with those, like if I'm actually working on a project or doing something, I can't really listen to my audiobook because um, a lot of times it's too slow or <laughs> yep. I'm going to be either listening more than I'm working or working more than I'm listening and it just doesn't work right. So, <laughs> so yeah. I totally get it. Yeah, it, it's one of those things. And because we're such techies, I'm curious, what are some apps that you use on your phone because <laughs> you've got the audio books which I think is huge so are you using like um iBooks on an iPhone or are you using like I think there's like even some libraries have their own apps now like I'm all about books now before when I was a kid forget it I did, could care less I liked them but I didn't read them now I'm like what book can I read next and I have five on my shelf waiting for me and what's another one I can add <laughs> right so I am an Android girl I have not um going over to the dark side 
eye of the <laughs> Apple world. <laughs> yep, it's because you like that back button. I know. Android <laughs> users are all about the back button. I just keep holding on. Um, so <laughs> for my audiobooks, I actually use Audible. Oh, yeah. Um, I love Audible. Um, and pretty much most of my, you know, the things that I want to read, I can get on there. I don't. I don't usually have a hard time, you know, of them ha not having something that I want. Right. Um, so that's on my phone. Uh, for music, I like, I use Spotify. Oh yeah. I like to create my own playlist. So I have like playlists for everything, depending on what, <laughs> what kind of mood I'm trying to invoke. <laughs> playlist for it. Um, so th those are definitely, and I have like tons of apps. Like I'm one of those people that I'm constantly having to like, delete stuff or remove stuff because my phone is like you are using up all the space on your phone <laughs> <laughs> yep <laughs> so you know yeah <laughs> That's awesome. and so going back to the friends and you it sounds like you have some good uh entrepreneurial spirits around you did you grow up uh with people family and friends that are like entrepreneurship is cool like give it a try or was it more like you need to get to work and get into a nine to five and don't worry about nothing else. Like, I'm always curious about that. Yes, I definitely did not grow up around entrepreneurs. Um, I have like some distant relatives that are entrepreneurs, but not anyone that I saw on a daily basis. Yeah. Um, and I definitely came from the family where you go to school, you get a job and you stay there 30 years. Yeah. And so you just calls me crazy. Right. And I never was good at that. So even when I was in corporate America and I, I worked a lot for um, local and state government as well um, during my, my time, you know, not being an entrepreneur. Yeah. But even in doing that, and I always felt like I don't want to work for somebody else. Like it was always that itching in the back of my, you know, <laughs> back of my throat that was like, this is something about this is just not right. Like I don't understand why I just can't take as much vacation as I want to. Like, yes. Why do I only have a week? This is stupid. <laughs> you know, like, why do I have to be here at eight o'clock? Nobody is calling my phone at eight o'clock. Why can I come in later? Like, exactly. <laughs> like, you know, just all these different things. And I've always just been one that caught on to things very quickly. And I, you know, you give me a project and I can knock it out. And so then I would be like, why am I here for eight hours? Like, <laughs> I'm done with my work. <laughs> That's <laughs> and why we get along so well, because we are the same. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> like, why am I still sitting here? So um, there was always just this inkling that it has to be a different way. Like it has to be something better, something else, something that fits who I am. Um, my dad used to always tell me, because pretty much every two or three years, five at the most, I would change jobs. Because I was just like, I'm, I'm bored. I know everything with that one. And I want to just, yep. and my dad was just like, it drove him insane. <laughs> <laughs> If you don't get to a job and just stay at a job, it doesn't look good on your resume and da, 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 da. But even then, like, I always knew, like, it doesn't matter what it looks like on my resume because I'm not going to need one for long. Like, <laughs> I had no idea what kind of business I wanted to start or what I wanted to do. I tr I've tried, like, so many things as an entrepreneur before, you know, getting into what I'm doing now. And, but I just always have known that, the regular a regular job just was not gonna work for me yeah and did you uh, when you were starting out did you have because you knew that you that a regular job wouldn't work for you but did you know and did you plan ahead for it like i call it planning your exit strategy where no matter what what your situation is you're planning for that entrepreneurship because it's expensive and you have to go into it knowing that ahead of time otherwise it's a real struggle and you're really strapped down to doing things that you might not really like so i'm just curious did you have any kind of uh plan when you went into it or did you just jump in right so i tell people <laughs> <laughs> so when i first um started uh my business that i have now um and i would say started in the coaching world because yeah. even even in doing coaching, I didn't um, actually start as a brand branding coach. But 
just started out in a culture where I was still working my nine to five. And I, um, at the time, I really wasn't even thinking about an extra strategy. I knew I eventually wanted to leave. But for me, it was just like, oh, okay, it's going to be a while down the road. You know, I was really like, until I could see where it's going to, you know, replace my income and things like that. Like, I really wasn't thinking about leaving at the time. So yeah. I told I actually ended up being a involuntarily <laughs> full-time entrepreneur because what ended up happening was I ended up getting um, laid off from my job oh wow and so when that happened like no warning um no severance package just wow this is you know this is what it is you know type of thing you're the last one hired and you're the first one to go basically yeah and um and I just remember saying, you know, I just don't want to go back to work for anybody. And so from that point, that was uh, July of 2014. Yeah, so that was July of 2014. At that, at that point, I had been, um, my business had been started for about six months, six, seven months. So I really was not <laughs> planning on not having my job, you know, at the time. And I just went into, okay, what do, what do I have to do? So for about two years, I was, I did full-time entrepreneurship. And then just recently last year in September, I decided to go back to work because I knew I wanted to make some of those shifts that we talked about earlier. Yeah. Um, in my business, I got a, I had gained a lot more clarity on what I wanted to do and, um, you know, a different kind of direction than I want to do. And I know, I knew that I needed some time to be able to, um, to build that up in the way that I wanted to. And so, but in the meantime, I still need to eat. Yes. Cause you know, I kind of come accustomed to eating every day. <laughs> <laughs> It's a nice thing to do, yeah. You know, so I made the decision to go back to work, um, which a lot of entrepreneurs don't like to talk about. And a lot of entrepreneurs, you know, do it, but they secretly do it and don't want to tell nobody. Yeah. So I um, decided to do, you know, go back to work. I, um, so I'm back working a nine to five right now, actually. And um, now with that plan in place, you know, I know exactly how long I plan on staying there. I have my plan. I know exactly what I need to make happen in my business, different things that I'm looking to accomplish to be able to walk away um, from that nine to five and not have to ever go back to that situation again. Um, but yeah, so now I do. So I tell people if you can have an <laughs> extra strategy, it's, ba it's definitely the way to go. Yeah. Um, being that I've I've pretty much done it both ways, involuntarily <laughs> or not having a plan. And then now voluntarily having a plan um, to do that. So it definitely is easier <laughs> with <Yeah>. the plan. <laughs> well, and it's so, it's so cool that you're speaking out about that because that is a big thing where, I mean, I tell people all the time, because I'm used to working multiple jobs because I want to, not because I have to. And mm -hmm. they, I was always, I mean, I worked one time, it was just ridiculous. I had two part-time jobs while finishing up college. And that's when I started my first business, which was the magazine business. And I don't even know how I did all of that, but I did. And, and it's like, it's okay to go back to work and be an entrepreneur. I mean, a lot of people feel like it's, you have to be one or the other, and it's not. These days, it's so nice to have both worlds and if I could have I you know it's, it's a good thing that my previous job it was a conflict of interest if I would have stayed so that's why I had to leave otherwise chances are I'd probably still be working part-time there just because of the fact that it would help pay the bills so that I can continue doing what I need to without stressing as much as I have been and you know and it's fine it's I'm where I'm supposed to be and I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing but yeah, I tell people all the time, if you have the option to go part time, do it. If it's what's going to help alleviate the stress and help you move forward with your business, why not? Like, if it's not killing you, why not? You know? Right, exactly. And it was so funny because, um, you know, you go through the different emotions, um, you know, with it too, especially having been 
a full-time entrepreneur and making the, the hard decision to, you know, go back to work. Cause the, as an entrepreneur, once you go full time, like your your mindset is that I'm never gonna have to work for anyone else again. Right. You know that that is what you're looking to do. Yeah. Make that tough decision and say, you know what, you know, this is what I need to do. This was best at this moment. It was hard, and I um, one of the things I do love about social media is that you do get to share your story. And I remember um, I went back to work in September. I didn't you know, those closest to me knew, but I didn't really share with anybody um, that I had done that. And I remember on my birthday, November 30th, in case everyone, anyone wants to see. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, on my birthday, I, my boss had gave me like this really amazing gift. Um, just him, you know, actually having taken the time to know who I am as a person. And I wrote a Facebook post about it. I took a picture of what he had um, given me and I just wrote a post saying that if since I did make this decision to go back to work that I was really um, excited and glad that I went to a place that one understood the fact that yes I am an entrepreneur and yes I do have my own business but it doesn't mean that I'm not going to be a good worker for you yes in your business and that you know really had this family vibe that my business you know where I work at has and makes me feel good so it's like I don't dread going to work every morning like I actually like what I do so um I made that post and in that post I just shared about how I had to make this tough decision to go back to work and how you know I'm happy that I did and just really trying to encourage people that were struggling with that decision to not let you know other other entrepreneurs or other people in this space make them feel like they failed at (laughs) building a business because they decided to go back to work and i had so many comments on that post of women just saying how oh my god i've been dealing with this people inboxing me emailing me just saying you know i've been dealing with this i had one girl that was like i had a um interview scheduled for Friday and I almost didn't go because I was feeling like I would be failing as an entrepreneur. And she was like, and from reading your post, I'm going to go. Like, it was Love just it. crazy. And I just was like, I was just like, it just showed me like the importance of utilizing your platform and really sharing your story as an entrepreneur, the good and the bad. Yeah. You know, because it's all a part of it. It's all a part of the journey. It's so true. And I love that you actually shared that with people because it, people want to know that side. They need to know that side. Um, and, and it's so important to realize that, I mean, it should be celebrated that companies like the one that you're with are encouraging and are actually being open to having entrepreneurs be a part of their business because let's face it, they're getting a two for one deal there basically. I mean, (laughs) (laughs) they're getting somebody who they know can handle the job that they're going to give them and probably some more and (laughs) that they're going to learn from that entrepreneur because what you're learning and especially what you're learning and (laughs) doing on your own time is going to cross over to their time. And it may even cross over into other departments because you might be looking at some of their stuff and be like, listen, if you tweak this, if you do this, take this quiz, like whatever, just a suggestion, then they're going to be like, dang, we got somebody good for half the price and we didn't even have to go out there and look for anybody. We got them right here, you know? Right, exactly. It's like, that's smart. And I, I love hearing when, I love when I hear companies being open to that because I have, um, I actually have a client of mine who is a nonprofit and they blow me away every day because they're just the most amazing people to work with. They've known each other for so many years. I mean, we're talking 10, 20 years, maybe more. And um, they've all worked together and they've accepted me into the group, you know, and I help them with web stuff and whatever else they need. And um, the the, um, openness that they have though for because they work with different uh, contractors and uh, the openness and willingness to share everyone's talent and 
share what they do is just amazing. I mean, I was at a conference for them that I was working for them. And of course, you know, my professional self is like, okay, we're here for somebody else. We have to do what we need to do, yada, yada. And it, it's like, they're, they're like, do you do what you need to do here during this time, but make sure you go check out this and see if you get any ideas for us as well as for you. And maybe you'll make some contacts and maybe you'll make a new client. And I'm like, is this a test? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I, I'm like, are you guys serious? I, I mean, it's just, it's so cool to be open like that. And people appreciate that so much more when you're on that level. Mm -hmm. It definitely, it definitely does. And it, for me, you know, to me, it just shows how um, the marketplace is evolving too, you know, yeah. with, that people are recognizing that um, there are more entrepreneurs now than there were before. And pretty much, you know, a lot of people are parallelpreneurs, you know, they have a business on the side, even though they, you know, they're working during the day. And so having a company that embraces that definitely makes it, it's a win-win because like you said they get that piece but then also it makes you want to stay longer right because yep. it's like i don't mind i'm doing good work I'm, you know because i work for a counseling center so not only are they doing good work in the community but it's a good company right and i can still build my business on the side and i actually like it so i'm not i'm not trying to rush to get out right you know? right if it was somewhere, if it was somewhere that wasn't like that, you know, I would be like, okay, I'm trying to be on this six month plan. Where <laughs> now I'm more like, okay, a year and I'm cool, you know, type yeah. of thing. So, yeah, no. And if it works, you know, that's the thing. What's cool is you have a plan, you mm -hmm. know, what your end game is. And let's say a year comes and you're like, you know what, I can still ride this wave because I'm doing what I need to do in my business and I enjoy doing what I'm doing it for this business, then that's the pivot that you can continue to stay on. Like, or you don't have to take a pivot. You can just stay on that track until you need to, you know? Exactly. Exactly. And speaking of counseling, I don't know if you've heard of this app. Uh, well, it's an, it's a website, um, but they are, I'm obsessed with them because they're really um, doing amazing work and it's all for free, which is crazy. Um, Crisis Text Hotline. Okay. It is fantastic. Check them out. They're on Facebook. They have their website. Um, it's, I believe it's based out of New York. And I mean, I'm just so blown away. It's free crisis management. I mean, if you're stressed, if you're, if you're dealing with depression, I mean, whatever it is, they got you on the text hotline and they got you on Facebook Messenger. I mean, they're doing amazing stuff and uh believe it or not a lot of it is through the youth they're dealing with a lot of that through the youth but anybody can use them mm -hmm. and i just i can't believe that is there and that it's such a valuable resource that has been i don't know how long they've been around but i'm just finding out about them and i'm like everyone needs to know about this i don't care who you are you need to know about this <laughs> right right i definitely would check them out yeah it, they're really awesome. Um, so what is a, a, a challenge or two that you're facing right now in your business? For me, I would say right now it is, I'm at that point in my business of the whole team building and having to know it, like know it in my mind that I need to hire someone. Yep and I need um, a team member uh, to help me with, you know, different things that I have going on. Um, and being okay with that, for me, is not about, oh, where is the money going to come from? For me, it's about relinquishing. <laughs> yeah. I hear you on that one. You know, relinquishing stuff, because I'm like, are they really going to do it? Are they going to do it? I don't know. <laughs> like, yep. um, so that's a real thing. And so that's kind of my biggest thing right now. And my mentor is like, you need to hire somebody like immediately. What are you doing? And I'm just like, I'm going to do it. Yeah. And I just haven't done it yet. So that, that would probably be one of my biggest struggles. It, yeah. Right? And that's a big <laughs> one. I mean, I, I will tell you, I, ha so I have a VA who, 
funny enough, is somebody I used to work with, and she's a close friend of mine in my area too. So it, I'm very lucky, but I drive her crazy, but in a good way, and we work together really well. But uh, the problem is, is I and I've gotten better, but I still I will hand things over, which is very hard to do, especially when you're starting out. I mean, I. I was like, I can't hand things over, but I can't do everything. So how is this going to work? <laughs> right. <laughs> and so finally, when I was able to hand things over, I would hand things over and send her a message, you know, through, I use uh, FreedCamp, which is a free project management system or um, Slack. And I'd be like, okay, here's XYZ, if you can do this. And then 30 minutes, an hour later, I'm like, okay, so no worries on that. I just did it. Don't worry about it. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> and and you know meanwhile she's like uh okay uh, so what do you want me to do well i let me get back to you i don't know let me figure it out <laughs> <laughs> that was so in me so and that's why i'm like i think that's why i haven't hired anybody yet because i'm like yeah. after i see i would drop them insane well and the the thing too is you know i mean let's be honest because when you're on that end of the spectrum you're like all right cool well i'm still getting paid so you know you're you're wasting your own time and money and so you know that's the important part too is to think about well what i tell people and what's great you're already doing this is you're you're thinking about building your team and even when i was at my nine to five i was building my team in my head i was thinking about okay who do i work with that i like who do I know that I like and can do X, Y, Z? And that's also why I talk to so many people and ask them like, what do you do? When will I need you? And I'm gonna put you on my list because I keep a running list. So that way I know who to reach out to. Cause my biggest fear is running into something and not specifically knowing someone that I can trust to take care of it. Because my reputation, I've always had this where my reputation is on the line and people come to me for my support, my resources, my whatever. And if, because they know I'm gonna follow through and I'm gonna get them results. And if I refer them to somebody, I need to make sure those people are gonna do the same because if they're not, that's a reflection on me and I can't be having that. Right, exactly. I totally, I'm totally <laughs> on board with you with that. And so that, it definitely is. Um, so I've been, I've kind of been doing some conversations um you know with some some people like you said knowing those people that i trust and like asking for referrals and yeah um so I've, i have i've done some small things so what i what i did <laughs> <laughs> what i did was i did recently hire somebody to do a small project for me okay to help me with a small smaller project just so i could not even about me trying them out but about me allowing myself to get used to right someone working for me <laughs> like so i was like okay i'm gonna try this small project and so I, that went well and so now with her like we're gonna do another project together <laughs> baby steps are key right <laughs> so, I'm, so right now that's kind of where, where i'm at i'm doing more project based than you know, full-time VA or part-time VA. Like, it's just more like, I have specific projects that I need to get done. And so I'm, ha I'm hiring her like on a project basis. And that's smart because a lot of people, once they get into the VA thing, they hire and they're not ready for that because they didn't take those baby steps. And that's the smart way to do it is to really let pick something specific and give that to them. Because again, you're, you're, giving these instructions to somebody who you may not know most of the time you don't know them they don't know your business they're not as passionate about your business as you are so if you give them these instructions that are you know not very clear or aren't very specific in whatever you're trying to communicate through it it's hard for them to come up with stuff and then you're like then you're upset because you spent time and money on hiring someone and you still haven't met your vision and you're right. mad about them not doing it, but really it reflects back on you because you didn't take the time to try to practice and get to that step. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's all a whole system. Like I look at everything as mind maps. I'm a, I'm a freak when it comes to mind maps. I like post-its, whiteboard, mind maps. Let's yes. go. <laughs>
Everything's a process. <laughs> yes, I love it. <laughs> Look, you sure we're not brother and sister? <laughs> I'm telling you, I feel like we are. I feel like we are long, long across, because I forget, where are you at? I'm in Virginia. Yeah, we are definitely, there's some kind of connection there. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to ask, what is one piece of advice that you would give somebody who is either thinking about starting to become an entrepreneur or who maybe is still early on in entrepreneurship? My number one advice is that I would say, trust yourself. Um, I think so often as new entrepreneurs, you know, we come in wanting everyone, thinking everybody else has the answer and we don't have right. the answer. And, um, and so that's why a lot of times you end up with entrepreneurs that end up doing things that they didn't never want to do, building businesses they don't even like because yeah. they were listening to everyone else's answers instead of trusting themselves and knowing you know, what their vision is and trusting that their vision is good and that it is their vision for a reason. Um, and so that, that's my number one piece of advice is to really just fully trust yourself and to understand that there really is no box and you know, yes, you can have a mentor and yes, you can have a coach completely believe in that, but you want to make sure that you have a coach or a mentor that is acting more of like a tour guide. Yes. Taking you around and showing you the different pieces and you're, you're allowing you to discover on your own, um, allowing you to pick the pieces that work best for you and leave the rest and not someone that is acting more like a cloner <laughs> that's trying to turn you into them. So, you know, for me, that's a really, especially in the branding space, that's a really big thing for me. Like, um, I'm really waging war against the clones. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I don't want to look at your brand and automatically know who you work with. Yeah, well, and that's that's a tr real thing. You know, I I will say, I will be honest, I struggle with, calling myself uh, a business coach or a business mentor because of, or a consultant because of the fact like there are so many different mm -hmm. opinions of each of those key words mm -hmm. that it, some I'm like, well, no, that's not, that's not me. Like it's so weird, which is probably why I created, you know, way back in the day, creative consultant because I didn't want to be part of some of these um, groups. But I can see, because I, I like being part of a team. I like being that teammate, that team player that you need, that you've been looking for, that maybe you didn't even know you needed, but now you do, and helping you get to the next level. And I know that you're going to teach me something while I'm teaching you something. So to say that I'm an expert or to say that I'm uh, you know, a coach, I feel like it's more like a mentorship because we're working together, but it's just so funny because there's so many people that have like set, no, this is exactly what this means. And you got to be watching what you say when, you, when you're calling yourself X, Y, Z. And so it's just, I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. I just went off the top of my head there. <laughs> <laughs> no, it does. It makes total sense. And I mean, really it's because this is my, this is my own personal opinion. This yeah. is not in nobody's book, but <laughs> But I really feel like uh, in, in today's space, especially in the online space, that we've really lost track of what the true essence of an entrepreneur is. Yeah. The true essence of an entrepreneur was somebody that did something that nobody else was doing. They had no problem thinking outside the box. They knew that traditional business wasn't the route that they wanted to go and they created their own route. But for some reason now, all of a sudden in the online space, we want to try to tell everybody, this is the blueprint. This is the route, right. this is the direction you have to go. And yes, you know, there are lessons, you know, that people can learn and part of, you know, why you do work with a coach and a mentor so that you don't necessarily have to go around the mulberry bush a thousand times. You can only yeah. go two times. Yeah. You know? But 
at the same time, it's still about that individuality, that uniqueness of who you are and what you're bringing to the table. I've had so many people um, that have come to me to work with me who have come and like already had websites and I'm like, okay, so tell me why you picked these colors. You know, why do you have blue in, you know, this color on your website? And it's like, I don't know. The last person I worked with, that's just the colors they told me to have. I don't even like blue. <laughs> what? Why is your whole website blue? Like <laughs> for real. You don't even like it. Like, but there's so there's so much of that that is happening in the online space. And so that's why, you know, for me, it's so important that new entrepreneurs coming out and even those that are have been doing it for a while yeah. really understand that you can you can shift. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like you can make the change and you can decide, I don't want to do this anymore. I'd rather do something else, you know, or I'd rather do it in this way or get back to how I originally planned on doing it and do that. Yeah. It's something it, if you do that and it doesn't work and then you decide, okay, well, let me make some shifts and some tweaks and okay, okay, now this works. Then to do it somewhat else's way and not ever feel fulfilled because you just did what they wanted you to do. Right. You didn't really do what was in your heart. Well, yeah, and I think you hit on a great point there. And uh, I think it's because of the fact that we play that comparison game, right? We, we look, now that we have the power of online and being able to see everything and connect with everyone, we are constantly seeing, and it's great because, you know, we want to be able to, especially for those who aren't very creative or don't think they're very creative, we want to be able to see examples, which is why I always tell people, my website's not perfect by any means, but use it as an example because it's going to help you understand a little bit more of, you know, where certain things are, what the flow is, things like that. And to always let me know what opportunities I have, let me know that feedback because that's going to help anybody in business move to the next stage. And when it comes to down to it, you are always going to have something that you want to compare or to look at for a reference. But like you said, you need to remember that it's you, you need to bring you to the table and if you don't like those colors, don't have them. Right. And, exactly. you know, I, I'm, I will say I'm a website snob, but it's in your benefit because I'm going to tell you like what opportunities you have and where you need to go to get those fixed. Um, because I want that, I want your online presence to be strong. I want it to look decent and I want to help you be build a better business really. And so it's funny when I come across these sites that, who knows who did it, how it got done. It doesn't matter. But what matters is, is that if you have this similar to the color thing, if you have stock photos on your website, which is totally fine, that, that it is what it is that I have some as well, but don't have stock photos, especially on your about page. Cause I have seen this before uh, of somebody that, I assume is you, but then I scroll down and I realize that it's the complete opposite of who you really are. Cause now I see your picture and you look nothing like that picture up up top. Right. <laughs> so it's like, again, it's just simple things that can be looked at and understand like, especially on an about page, chances are you shouldn't be putting stock photography maybe at the top to make it pop a little bit depending on what the situation is but let's let's see you like right. i want to see you the company who whoever it is like get specific and don't have you know don't have random people on your website that have nothing to do with who you're marketing to or who right. you are <laughs> right and i mean but to say just to piggyback off what you said though yeah. i think the key to what you just said was you tell people to go to your website and use it as an example. Yeah. Like, that is the point. There's nothing wrong with looking at people for inspiration. Right. But there's a problem with duplication. Yep. <laughs> like, you know, inspiration, not duplication. Like, don't say, you know, go and take that person's persona and say, oh, this is, I'm going to be them, you know? And I, that's what I see a lot of. Unfortunately, a lot of people, and I, you know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a truth teller. So a yep. lot of people in the online space that call themselves coaches, 
that's what they're doing. They're just creating hundreds of little clones who are look, feel, and act just like them. And, you know, and on some level it's working, but, sure. but ultimately for those that are really craving true authenticity and that are craving to create a legacy for their families, um, that is truly who they are, that's not going to work. You know, if you're the type of person that wants your kids and grandkids and, um, your neighborhood to say, you know, Hey, that was Miss Camara. And I just remember how she was, you know, and your business represents that you can't be somebody else. Like right. you have to be who you are. You have to be who you are because either way, people are going to talk. So oh, either yeah. they're say, Oh my gosh, you're exactly how I imagined you would be. Or they're going to be like, well, dang, not the life I thought. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and that's the thing, you know, your, your online presence, your, your website, your social media, I mean, you can't fake it for too long because at some point they're going to see you on live video or they're going to see you in person or they're going to read your copy and they're going to be like, wow, this person is nothing like I thought they were or in a, not in a good way either, you know? Right, exactly. Uh, I forget, I saw somebody had posted online that they, they reached out to or they looked at somebody's website who they, they really loved the person, but they looked at their website and they were reading some of the copy that they had on there and it was a total turnoff on it for them. And they were like, they were almost crushed because it gave them a different perspective of who that person may or may not be. And they didn't really like it, you know? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Thank you so much for inviting me. But yes, of course. I'm like so glad that we got to do this. And it, you know, this is where I get really energized about all this stuff is because there's so many common links and I just don't hear about enough about it. And I finally, I was telling this to somebody else earlier is that it feels so good to finally have yes to entrepreneurship because I feel like I'm actually somewhat co collected and know exactly how to present to the world um, versus just Ed Troxel creative. And, um, and so, doing this podcast is just a, a small part uh, piece of a huge puzzle that I have. And, you know, it's been on my list forever and now there's a purpose with it. And to be able to bring to the marketplace something that seems very different than what's out there, because not only that I see differently, but everyone I've had on the show now has been telling me that this is unique. This is something different, which pushes me into the, Oh my gosh, this is awesome. There's, I'm onto something and this is really who I am. So this is really now how I can translate it online and get it, people to notice it more. Definitely, definitely. And I think that what I love about this, Ed, and why I'm so excited that you invited me here is because there needs to be a place where people can go to hear these real conversations. Yes. There needs to be a place where you know, people are just telling the truth. <laughs> Yes. I tell people entrepreneurship is very rewarding, but it's not for the faint of heart. It's, right. not, it's not easy. It's not all rainbows and, you know, flowers and stuff. Like, it's hard work and there's a lot that goes into it and not everyone's always going to get you. And so I feel like this platform that you're creating is giving people the opportunity to see all of the parts of it to see, okay, it is difficult times, but they all seem to still love it. Right. <laughs> you know, they're, still, they're still doing it. So it's worth it, you know? Oh, totally. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm really excited about what you, what you've created here. Thank you. Yeah. And I, and I love to, this is what, see, this is how I like, I really strive. Well, I don't know if that's the right word. I really get going when I have these conversations, like I can't do this necessarily um, as good on live video because I need the other person there to engage with because I can really get going as you can see. Um, but where I was going with that is, is that you brought up a key point, which it, everyone brings up the, the, the part where I was like, yes, they nailed it because we weren't even expecting it where you talked about having a job while being an entrepreneur, like having to go back into the workplace. And cause you know, part of my, fear uh, when I was starting, starting this was, 
okay, I, ha I mean, I have this long list of questions because I'm like, okay, well, I have these questions that I can ask in case, in case we need to and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, well, maybe every, I don't want every episode to be the exact same content. I do ask the same question, you know, um, at, towards the end, like, what's the one piece of advice? Because I think that's cool to have something connect. But um, I go through it and I'm like, after every episode, I'm like, this is money. Because even if they're all the same in terms of the, you know, loneliness and uh, meeting community and time management, like those, those are key components, but the stories are different. And that's what I'm in it for is the stories. And everyone listening will be able to connect to somebody different. Right. You know, and they're going to learn too, not just the roller coaster ride, but they're going to learn like what tools to use, what, what things to look at, what maybe they can apply to their business, who they need to reach out to. Like it's building the community and connecting the people that I've wanted for so long. Yes. Yes, yes. And it's just the start. It's crazy. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much for tuning in to the podcast. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Dive deeper into the conversation with this guest as well as others by going to yes to entrepreneurship.com forward slash podcast. Over there, you will find a list of all the previous episodes and bonus material for each guest. I hope that you'll continue to share out this podcast and please be sure to leave a review in iTunes and subscribe so that way others can discover this show and be able to realize they are not alone and that they have somebody they can count on to provide value and motivate and inspire them to keep moving forward. Together, we can make it happen. And like I always say, teamwork equals success. So go out there and do something great because why not?